Hello, I'm Jill from Ingvid, and today's lesson is on the subject of cricket, the game of cricket, which is a very English sport. And you might be thinking, well, how is this useful for me? I'm trying to learn English. So um, it's useful to you for the vocabulary, the, the words connected with cricket, um, you might find it useful, for example, to watch uh, a cricket match on television um, and listen to the commentary and see if you can follow it, if you recognise some of these words appearing. Um, it's usually at a, a quite a... the commentary is quite quick, so it's a good test for you to see if you can follow it and hear all the particular words. Um, and apart from the vocabulary itself and um, having some practice at listening, if you listen to a commentary, um, some of the cricket terms are used in idioms and metaphors in everyday life, even by people who don't really know they're connected with cricket. So we'll be looking at those on uh, the, later in the lesson, in the second part of the lesson. We'll be looking at 11 idioms, metaphors connected with cricket. So this should all be useful to you in your uh, expanding your English vocabulary. So um, here we go. And it's also of cultural interest, of course, to see what, what strange sports English people play and also some other countries um, who play cricket as well. So let's have a look. So it's a very English sport. Traditionally, it's English. Um, there's a picture of a bat, cricket bat, and the cricket ball there. So um, basically, uh, like with a lot of sports, you have a team of players, the members of the cricket team, are called players, and each team has 11 players, okay? And there's a captain who's the uh, person in charge of the team, the captain, okay? Uh, the place where the game is played is called a cricket ground, so it's a big open space with grass uh, and, of course, room for people to sit and watch. Um, in the middle of the, the big open space is a smaller area called the pitch, which is a long, narrow um, piece like that, piece of grass, long, narrow piece of grass called the pitch. And this is where um, people have to run backwards and forwards on the pitch sometimes. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, there's the pitch. And at both ends of the pitch is something called a wicket. Um, I think I'd better draw a wicket as well. Um, that's a wicket. So um, the wicket is made up of three sticks that go into the ground. They're wooden. They're called stumps. So three stumps go into the ground and two, two little pieces of wood sit on top. Um, those are called bales on top. So the point of the wicket is that if somebody throws the ball or bowls the ball at the person with the bat, if the ball hits the wicket and the bales fall off, that batsman um, is finished. He can't continue playing and somebody has to come and replace him. So that's part of the game. So at the end of the pitch in both places, uh, you have the wicket. Okay, so then you have the bat, which the batsman uses, which is made of a, a wood from a willow, willow tree. So it's quite hard. Uh, there's a ball uh, which is covered in red leather, traditionally. Okay. Um, there are two batsmen, one at each end of the pitch. 
there's a bowler who belongs in the other team uh, who throws the ball like this, bowls the ball at the batsman and the batsman has to hit the ball. So it's a little bit like American baseball, that sort of idea, but not uh, the details are different. Um, OK, bowler. And they, you also have fielders. These are people also from the same team as the bowler who are standing around the field. Uh, some are close to the pitch, some are further away, but they're all waiting to see what happens when the batsman hits the ball um, because they have to run after that ball and get it back as quickly as possible. Um, if they don't get the ball back, the, the two batsmen can run backwards and forwards on the pitch, scoring points, uh, which are called runs. So they want to try to stop them scoring too many points. So they get the ball back as quickly as possible. OK, so the pavilion is the, the sort of building at the edge of the, of the cricket ground where the, the cricket players uh, go into and come out of when they're ready to play. They come out of the pavilion uh, when, when maybe they've been knocked out. Um, they go back into the pavilion. Um, so that's the pavilion's quite important. Um, so when, uh, when the batsmen are batting, they are in. So that's called an innings. So the length of time they can stay in and score points or runs uh, is called an innings. And then if they're sort of knocked out, then they go. They may have scored 60, 60 runs, and that was their innings. OK. If they're out, uh, if they make, make a mistake, if the wicket is hit by the ball or other ways of getting them out, then they're out, they're finished, they have to go back to the pavilion. OK. Um, they can be bowled out by the ball hitting the wicket. They can be caught out. If they hit the ball and it goes up into the air and one of the fielders catches the ball before it hits the ground, then they've been caught out. Um, if the ball hits the ground first, then that's, they're, they're still OK. But um, if they catch the ball and it hasn't yet hit the ground, they have been caught out. OK, there's also a thing called LBW, which stands for leg before wicket. I don't fully understand that rule, but uh, sometimes some batsmen can be out because they put their leg in front of the wicket when they shouldn't have. Um, so that's another thing you might hear being mentioned. OK, so. Then there's a thing called an over. This is when the bowler throws six balls. So you have to have six balls bowled to count as an over. So everything's divided up into sections like that. So that's an over. Um, a run is when either the, the batsmen run from one end of the pitch to the other or, uh, or when they've hit the ball. They can score four runs if, if they hit the ball and it goes right to the end of the field and over a boundary uh, without anybody being able to catch it. If it rolls over the boundary, they've scored four runs. They can score six runs if, if they do that and the ball goes up into the air and it doesn't touch the ground before it reaches the boundary. If it goes, sometimes it goes into the, into the crowd of spectators, um, it might hit somebody. Um, but if it stays up in the air, um, then they've, they've hit a six. Okay, so um, they're just sort of clocking up runs that way, or actually literally running up and down the pitch. Um, okay, so, 
The points that they're earning, the runs, are called the score. And usually somewhere in the cricket ground at the side, somewhere where everyone can see, is a scoreboard, a big board with lots of numbers on. Um, this is a small version of a scoreboard. Some of them are electronic and they have a lot more information on them. But they, they show how many runs have been scored up to that point in the game. How many wickets, meaning how many wickets have been lost and, um, and batsmen are out because of it. How many overs, that means how many bowlings times six the bowler has done. Um, so you have to multiply 15 by six to work out how many times has the bowler bowled the ball. Um, first innings, if, if there's been a previous um, innings, and you, you can have more than one innings, so a team might have clocked up 328 uh, runs in a first innings, but now this is probably into the second innings and there's some more, more runs being um, scored. Okay. So that's that. Um, so I mentioned the crowd, the spectators, the people watching. Um, also, sometimes um, cricket is the kind of game which you can't play if it's raining. It's not like football and rugby where you can play in the rain or the snow sometimes. Um, if it's raining, you have to stop with cricket. So they have this... Um, phrase rain stopped play if if there's been a cricket match going on and then in the middle of the afternoon they stop and they say rain stopped play they had to stop because of the weather or sometimes they decide that the light isn't good enough if it's very cloudy and gray if the sky is gray uh, they don't have enough light to see what they're doing <laughs> well enough to to hit the ball. So sometimes bad light stopped play. I think that's possibly quite a controversial issue because sometimes people think we could have carried on then. It wasn't such a big problem. We could have carried on playing. But the, the authority, people in authority decided, no, we'll stop now. So um, not everybody agrees on when to stop. So, OK, there are lots of cricket grounds all over the UK. Uh, London has two, at least, but two famous ones are the Oval in South London and Lord's Cricket Ground in North West London. And those are where the big sort of international matches are played, as well as um, county matches. So just to explain county, the, the UK is divided up into counties and each county has its own cricket team. So uh, Yorkshire is a county, Surrey is a county, Kent, Somerset, there are lots of counties and they all have a cricket team. And also there are national teams. Um, England is a national cricket team. And then because of um, sort of historical reasons, what, when, you know, the former British Empire cricket became popular in former empire countries, uh, former colonies, which are now often still part of the Commonwealth, but there's no empire anymore, uh, but they still play cricket. So the West Indies... Australia, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and um, often those are called the test match, the, the sort of the top international uh, type of cricket match that can go on for several days. It, it's quite a slow game. You might start watching and thinking, oh, nothing much is happening. Uh, it's not as fast as uh, football or rugby. Um, it's quite sort of leisurely in a way. Um, 
So that's an overview of the vocabulary and roughly, I'm not an expert, but roughly um, how the game is played and how runs are scored. And then once both teams have had an opportunity to play, to be batting, um, they then see who, who, uh, who got the most runs and whoever got the most runs uh, wins the match. Uh, so <laughs> that's a rough uh, summary of the game of cricket. And we'll now have a look at some of the idioms and metaphors that come from it, which are used a lot in everyday life. Okay, so let's have a look at some idioms that uh, are connected with cricket. And um, appropriately, we have 11. There are 11 players in the team and we have 11 idioms. So let's look at the first one. So um, to bowl a googly, uh, nothing to do with Google, <laughs> uh, but bowling when you bowl the ball. Um, if you bowl a googly, in cricket, the bowler has um, sort of made the ball spin in some sort of way so that when the batsman hits the ball, um, it goes off in an unexpected direction. So it takes the batsman by surprise. So if you bowl someone a googly, you, you say something or do something unexpected and you take them by surprise. Okay. So um, that can happen in any, any context. So, okay, so the next one. If someone says we're, we're on a sticky wicket here, uh, this is the wicket, the, the, the sticks that are in, in the ground. Um, the, the cricket ground is grass. So if it has been raining and the ground is wet, it can be a bit sticky a bit muddy so it's not it's not a very good uh, surface to, to play cricket so if you're on a sticky wicket um, it's more difficult to play so if if you're meeting someone for the first time and you you can't quite get onto the same wavelength you can't find anything in common with them and you're finding it difficult to have a conversation, you could say, well, I think I'm on a sticky wicket with this person. I don't really know what to talk to them about. Or again, in any other situation that's difficult, you're on a sticky wicket. Okay. Um, if someone says he's had a good innings, um, in cricket terms, that's when the batsman is in for a long time, scoring lots of runs. And hopefully they try to get more than 100. Um, if they get 100, it's called a century, just like 100 years is called a century. Um, to have a good innings means you've had a really good long time doing something. Either you might have worked for the same company for 20 or 30 years. So you could call that a good innings. Um, it's even used for people um, when they get older, if they live to be in their 80s or 90s, uh, they've had a really long life. Uh, you can say about them, um, he's, he or she has had a good innings, meaning they've had a really long life and op an op opportunity to do lots of things in the length of time that they've lived. Okay. Um, to hit someone for six, as I explained earlier, if you hit the ball as the batsman and it goes up into the air and it lands in the crowd, you automatically score six runs without even having to do any running. Uh, so a, a hit for six is a really good thing because you get six points in one action. Uh, if, if you hit someone for six, metaphorically, um, 
you you give them a big surprise. So it's a kind of um, unexpected surprise, really. Um, I was hit for six when um, someone gave me a car for a birthday present and that hit me for six. It was a very unusual thing to happen. So that sort of thing. Okay. And similarly, you can be bowled over uh, if you're taken by surprise again. Uh, I was bowled over when somebody gave me um, the, this car for my birthday. I was bowled over. Um, not literally. I didn't fall over literally, but I was really surprised. So that's a similar idea. Um, to field a question, often uh, politicians have to do this. They may have given a speech and then they, there may be journalists or uh, members of the public in the audience who are then given the opportunity to ask questions. Um, and the politician has to take the questions and reply to them in some way. So you remember the fielding in cricket is the people who are standing out uh, beyond the pitch, waiting to see where the ball goes. So if the ball goes in their direction, they run after it and get it back to the bowler as quickly as possible. So it's, um, it's, it's the kind of thing that you do uh, to keep, um, keep things moving. So to field a question, a politician has to hear the question and respond to it. So they are fielding the questions. Okay. Um, also, if, if the politician is asked a question which they can't think of an answer to, they, they could be stumped, meaning they just don't know what to say. If you're stumped, uh, these are the stumps of the wicket, these upright three sticks. And if you're stumped, that's when the ball hits the wicket and the batsman is out. So it's a sort of... Um, you're defeated by it, you, you've lost, you've lost your position. So if someone is stumped when you ask them a question, they don't know how to respond, they don't know how to reply. You know, I'm really stumped by a, a situation, you don't know what to do, that kind of thing. Okay. Then if you do something off your own bat, there's the bat, it means you do something on your own initiative. You, you're, you think of something and nobody has asked you to do it, maybe at work, but on your own initiative, you think, oh, that would be a good idea. I think I'll do that. You don't ask anybody. You just think, I'll do that. It will be helpful. So you do it off your own bat, um, your own initiative. And hopefully then people say, oh, did you do that? That was useful. Thank you. Um, I would never have thought of doing that. Well done. So hopefully you get thanked for doing something off your own bat, unless people don't like what you've done and then you're in trouble. So, um, and then, you know, you should have asked first before you did that. <laughs> so it was off my own bat. Okay. Um, if you catch someone out, going back to the cricket, the fielders try to catch a ball after the batsman has hit it to get them out. If they catch the ball before it hits the ground, the batsman who hit that ball, or batswoman, women play cricket too, um, they are then out. They've lost their place. So if you catch someone out uh, in general ordinary life. Uh, maybe that person was, was telling a lie about something and you, you might realise, ah, oh, that can't be true because you know something else that disproves what they're saying. And maybe they say they met somebody on a certain date, but then you say, but you were on holiday on that date. You can't have met them. And oh, I've then they say, oh, I got the dates wrong or something. Maybe they did, but you caught them out by proving that what they said was not true. 
So that's to catch someone out. Um, to put a spin, this is very similar to bowling a googly, really. Uh, if you put a spin on something, politicians again do this a lot, they might exaggerate something or um, give something a certain additional meaning that it doesn't really have. If you put a spin, if you spin, put a spin on the ball, when the bowler bowls the ball, they make it spin so that, again, when the batsman hits it, it um, goes in an unexpected direction. So to put a spin on something is to do that, to, to distort or exaggerate in some way. So someone could be called a spin bowler or a spin doctor in politics, if they put a spin on a story, um, they're exaggerating some aspect of it. Just maybe to, um, if a, a journalist writes an article uh, and it's designed to sell more newspapers because they're trying to suggest there's some sort of scandal or controversy when in fact there isn't really, but they're just making something out of nothing or making something out of a, a very small detail that wasn't really important, just to try to get some political advantage or something like that. So that's the spin, which is used in politics a lot now and in the media. And then finally, um, if someone says it just it's just not cricket, um, traditionally, the game of cricket is meant to be a very honourable game played by gentlemen. So they're supposed to be honest and honourable. Um, if somebody does something a little bit deceptive um, and another person doesn't like it, they, they say, well, you shouldn't really have done that. You shouldn't. You were telling a lie there, really. You know, it's just not cricket. You can't behave like that. You should be an honest person. So cricket is associated with honesty, even though there have been times when, you know, um, there have been dishonest things happening in cricket, but let's not go into that. Um, so if someone says, it's just not cricket, they mean, you know, it's not honest. You should be more honest and honourable and be um, don't tell lies, tell the truth and be um, res a respectable person uh, that people can trust. OK, so those are the 11 idioms. I hope that's useful. And from my explanation of roughly how cricket works, these metaphors should make more sense now. Uh, so I hope that's useful. Uh, if you'd like to go to the website ingvid.com and uh, do the quiz on this subject, test your knowledge and subscribe to my channel if you've liked this lesson and see you again soon. Okay, bye.